2017 that I started having a look at it and I met James. That was the first time I met James at the conference. And he, I was introduced to them by Accounting Web. So it was, it was actually a really, I know that conference isn't going to be anymore, but it was, that particular conference for me was actually really productive. So it's been postponed, hasn't it? I think until next year. So this is James, uh, James, who's the founder of Accountancy Manager. And how many, can you tell us a little bit about your practice? You're, you're up in Scotland. How, how yeah. big are you now? Well, yeah, so we've always had a slightly different model to, you know, a lot of the bookkeepers, because anybody who knows me, I've never hidden the fact that I hate administration, which is actually why I searched for Accountancy Manager. So at no point do we ever service any more than 40, 40 customers. Um, so so we, we basically have our team, we have our accountant, Elizabeth, we have, I've got uh, Early and Sophie who take all my calls from my clients and they do the chat box as well. Um, basically, our, our, basically what we do is we're, we're a one-stop shop for everything in business now, not just, not just bookkeeping. So we, we give advice, we've got, Simon Allen for um, an ex-bank manager who gives sort of financial guidance. We also tend to try and look for clients who in four to five years time are going to sell up their businesses and what they they really transfer all their finance department over to us, the chasing of debtors, so that their, their accounts, have, there's, there's basically three years of their accounts looking really well. So when the investor comes in to buy, you know, the whole thing looks really well. So. There, we take some clients with very big projects and they last for four to five years. Mm -hmm. So we're always networking to replace that next big that next big project. So, um, but we're very careful. Very interesting. And is there any, so that's kind of an interesting niche. Is there any kind of sector specification or is it just that sort of Yeah, I, I, IT tends to be, you know, they said, it's a horrible word, but they do tend to sell out quite quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things with IT balance sheets is because of the amount of R&D that they do, they tend to have quite a negative balance sheet. And it's very important for them to really get their accounts in order. And they tend to be the type of business that let the accounts go because they're more interested in IT. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's certain businesses like nurse, there's certain businesses like nursery, Amazon sellers that are quite successful tend to you know, if they turn over quite a lot and they've got something good there to tend to want to sell. So um, it's the same in the accountancy industry. I mean, a lot of people are selling up. Um, so it's really, we also have clients that are coming to the end of their, you know, the end of their road that are very successful for 30, 40 years and they're wanting to sell as well. So they do tend to hand us over absolutely everything. So we take, uh, we take all the debtor chasing calls. We do absolutely everything. Each client has a dedicated phone line, so they don't ring up and we answer High Street Business. They ring up, say, for example, it's called Joe Bloggs Limited, and we've rung them. They'll return the call to Joe Bloggs because we have a dedicated number for every client. We literally do hold, we literally hold the hand of every client, which is why we only service a maximum of, because you cannot, you cannot physically offer that service. Um, if you if, if you had two hundred clients, you would be you would be promising stuff that you couldn't do. We pretty much speak to all nearly all our clients every day. We go out for dinner with them regularly. They come into our office regularly for meetings. So that's the type of practice I like anyway. So I'm a social bird. So I love this. I think we could do a sort of detailed case study um, available on our website. So we will definitely talk to you about that. And of course, all of this now is socially distanced as it must be. You just said you've been, you've had a you've had a new line of work since lockdown. Is that right? You're making something. Oh, you mean in my store? Oh, yeah, I've been I've made about 200 masks. So just to demonstrate, I've been making nice, pretty ones like roses and it's just because everybody's been quite, you know, I don't really like black. So if anybody gives me nice material, I'll make them to match their outfit. You know, you've got to do something during lockdown. That is so lovely. I mean, you've got a sewing machine, presumably. I did. I brought a really expensive Genome sewing machine. Hmm. I used to be quite good when I was a kid and then just forgot about it. And then I've, the, the, since the lockdown, I've just created my love of sewing. I think because you do everything digital all the time, you get a bit sick of the screen and you get a bit sick of reading. And the sewing machine just allows you to have no screen time and just have a bit of fun and a few disasters along the way as well. But 
Fantastic. Lovely. Fantastic. Okay, Heather. Um, so you're also from Scotland originally, but you're not in Scotland now, are you? No, oh, I'm originally from Falkirk in central Scotland, and I moved down south 10 years ago now. Um, yeah, so now I'm based in the Ascot in Berkshire. It's very nice. I love it down here. Oh, lovely. And have you always operated the business from your home? Um, to be honest, no. I, my bookkeeping and accounting business was mainly going out to clients. So every day of the week, I'd either be in someone's factory, someone's office, um, someone else's home. So my whole week. I think we might have just lost you there, Heather. We were kind of clinging on with the with the slightly dodgy uh, internet there. Oh, you're oh. moving. You're moving again. Sorry, did you catch all that? <laughs> we did. Yeah, you were just saying you were sort of in and out of. You were in the factory. You were at clients' offices. Yeah, and then I decided. I thought, um, I don't really want to work this way. I'd rather be based at home. Um, so I sort of stepped back from some clients, and then other clients. I said, look, you either transfer to the cloud um, we're going to be 100% zero based practice uh, and I can do everything remotely so it allows me to my husband did travel a bit for work so it would allow me to go to Azerbaijan and uh, still carry on with my work no one ever knew really where I was so it made no difference wow Azerbaijan so it's a couple of people are saying they are finding you hard to hear unfortunately I don't know if you can up your mic or tell tell the kids to stop watching Netflix which is normally the problem I have but <laughs> okay can you hear me okay now so sit closer to the maybe just sit closer I read somewhere the other day that apparently if you can see part of the torso you are more inclined to trust the person you're speaking to so don't don't completely obscure your torso shoulders count um, we'll just try and speak yeah, yeah. loudly. Um, so hopefully, Margaret Crawford, you're going to be able to hear um, Heather. But Heather, so is it just you in the practice? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, it's me sitting in the home office here in Ascot, but there's actually four of us that work in the practice. I work very closely with a chartered accountants in Cheshire. Now, there's three of them there. There's the chartered account, two chartered accountants, actually, and a bookkeeper. So we sort of share work around at times. Um, they'll do quite a lot of the compliance work. Um, I'm starting to farm jobs that I really don't like doing myself, i.e. payroll. Let them do the payroll. Mm. Um, and obviously all the software all links and syncs really well with each other nowadays. Um, yeah, so that actually works quite well. So I'd say there's actually four of us. And it, it tends to work really, really well. We have a really good setup. Yeah. And how much difference does using something like accountancy manager actually make? No difference because I use Centre. Oh, I was like, oh, that's interesting. No difference at all. So sorry. <laughs> Centre. I should be, now that you're colour coded, I should know, shouldn't I? Yeah. So what's, tell us about the Centre. Yeah, well, Centre, I signed up to Centre at Accountex in 2019 last year I was looking for something I'm very much one well I was one that keep me stuck in my head which really isn't a good thing now we're starting to sort of ramp up the practice and hopefully grow quite soon I thought I really need to systemize things mm. um, get processes in place um, break down jobs into tasks and whatever but I also wanted something I still wanted I worked by lists so I wanted something that basically looked like a list of jobs to be done each day each month you know each week each year um so I searched high and low and eventually I found centre and um it just seemed to tick all the boxes it also with the um group in Cheshire they can also log in we're not doing that yet but they can also log in and do tasks and tick them off and we can sort of liaise with each other all in this one platform Wow, so you can have external people accessing it, or do they have to have their own login as well? Their own login as well, but they can access it and we can also get access to um, documents. We, um, I don't know about Sarah, but we do tend to store a lot of client documents now on Centre. Um, it's a secure portal, there's unlimited storage, um, so it saves extra costs, you know, buying storage products, apps, and whatever. 
So we tend to keep all our documents on there. And if we are asked, um, for example, last week, I got a call, a text, 11 o'clock at night, I need uh, my last two years of accounts, I'm, I'm trying to remortgage my house. So I mean, we could basically send these to the client within a minute. We could access them, send them off so good securely. And I also had um, a recent um, client who had quite a lot of funds with a solicitor locally and she was actually shut down on the spot so now he's having to go and try and claim his own funds back again luckily we had all the documentation from this lawyer stored on centre so we could just fire it off to the regulatory authority and then they've got the plans in motion now to try and claim this money back so just that's just two instances at the top of my head that it mm. really helps yeah so Sarah, does that is do you use that kind of functionality within Accountancy Manager? Does it do document sharing and signing and things like that? Well, I do. So I was going to maybe cover why I picked Accountancy Manager and why I was sort of looking for. You know, I covered at the beginning that I actually hate I hate administration. I really do. Um, I'm very. I'm a bit like the gardener. You know, when you have the gardener on your street and everybody else's garden around is gorgeous except the gardener. Mm. <laughs> Heather knows what I'm talking about. That's a Scottish thing. But you know, the, the gardener's garden isn't good. So, uh, you know, I'm very good at doing everybody else's administration bookkeeping, but I, I, I clearly needed to, you know, the one the, the area that we needed to prove in was, was our own. And obviously everybody speaks about turning your practice digital, but I actually think people actually forget to turn their own practice and processes digital before they even start bringing on clients to be digital, whether it's zero, whether it's sage, it's actually very important that you look after yourself first and get all the processes correct. So that was why we wanted as more and more clients were going digital. We wanted to be, we wanted our practice to be digital as well in the processes. So initially I wanted a, I wanted a package that did everything. So there's a lot of packages out there that do some of it and they do. So I wanted one that covered the onboarding and the, you know, the, covered the onboarding, the onboarding, the pros, um, the proposals, um, covered the, um, the, the MLS checks, you know, does the credit checks for companies' house, does the personal checks. I wanted absolutely everything in one go with the onboarding. I then also wanted it to do all the uh, practice admin side, like Heather was talking about, all the tasks. Um, we use the resources tab to basically for every client, we have uh, all the information about every client in the resources tab. So we have listed every single procedure and all the little niggle things that uh, each client likes and doesn't like. So basically if I got run over by a bus, you will go into each client's uh, resources tab and you would see everything that we, like line by line procedure so that some you, you, you could follow. The, 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 the third thing was obviously I wanted to, you know, it's not a debate about fixed pricing or hourly pricing. So whatever pricing you do, you want to see your work in progress. I personally still like to keep our, even though we have retainer prices, I still like to see what we're spending in our work in progress. So have we, you know, a lot of bookkeepers say, oh, we get, we get our pricing totally wrong. Well, you know, we, we're all open to that. So every client... Um, I, I think accountancy manager is really strong on all the timesheets of the working and the work in progress and whether you're running your at a profit is but it's a very strong area um, and pretty much we still we still we basically put in what we would like to receive per hour and even if it's a retainer hour we can see at the end of the month how successful we are in terms of um, getting that work done and are we well over our retainer um, because what, what we like to use it for is actually, if we're over our retainer, like anybody, nobody likes to work for free. And I notice as a company, the customer service drops a little bit when you feel like you're doing way over the hours that you, you know, that you've agreed to bill for. And I think it's really important to, if that is the case, there could be many the reasons why they, it's changed because the client's asking you to do more and you just over the time don't realise it. But at that point, you need to stop and say to the client, listen, this isn't the same as what you asked us to do in the first place. You know, we're, we're way over the hours now. But rather than let that continue and you become unhappy and feel very overworked, um, you need it's, it's very easy on accountancy managers dashboard to see 
whether whether you're going over or under and it, it, it's it's quite a discipline actually because you you know nobody wants to work for free so it's, it sort of forces you to make that decision quite quickly if you're not used to pricing and you're new in accountancy and bookkeeping and you and you want to get you know you see it all over the forum Amy every single question is can I have help with fixed pricing can I help help with pricing mm. you know the best thing is to set what you want to earn and then and then see if you're actually going to achieve it. It's only then, I've been at it 20 years, so I'm pretty good at judging the fixed prices and the retainers. But if you're not, it takes you, Heather will hopefully would agree with me on that, it takes you a wee while to master that, doesn't it, Heather? Definitely, yeah. But I must say, it's really interesting, Sarah, that you do that, because um, that is something that you don't use the practice management software for at all, actually. So that's um, that's really, really interesting. I mean, I'm the same as Sarah in the fact that we onboard clients through Centre, although it does have a link to practice ignition, which we also use, which mm -hmm. I've yet to set up because it's um, the link is done through is it Zapier. Uh -huh. um, so I'm not overly familiar with that, so I've sort of held back on um, linking the two. But we do that. We also do the AML, which Sarah mentioned. Um, within Centre, it's £2.80 per check to do an AML check, which I think is reasonable. Um, so we do those checks in addition to, obviously, all the ICB AML um, side of things. Uh, it's a company called Credus as well that do the AML, and I check them out. I've actually... Um, they are created by HMRC and one they're one of the top sort of providers so it's all done properly and your AML checks are all good to go. Um, we assign jobs um, through Centre, we do the workflow like Sarah Centre and then we do the communication as well um, and communication you can actually do emails from within Centre and you can also do text. And we're also finding actually more and more clients seem to be using um, WhatsApp to communicate. I don't know how about Sarah thinks, but uh, I seem to get more and more clients. It's all WhatsApp back and forward constantly. Um, yeah, it's just a norm communication. That sounds a bit gross to me. But also, actually, on that note, your audio, I think, is kind of getting worse. I wonder if, Heather, we might be able to kick you out of the meeting and get you to rejoin and see if that works. Hello. I but I, I personally could hear that, but I know that um, Pamela Dillon is funny, but hard to hear from me. So maybe if I just remove you and you just log in again. Um, I, I follow, while Heather's doing that, will I follow up on some points that Heather mentioned that were really, that were really good because I could hear what she was talking about. Yeah, because you also mentioned chatbots, didn't you? So. Yeah. So she was, she was, she was mentioning MLL checks, and one of the things on all, I would say the practice management software is actually are really good value when it comes to that. Now, I don't want to be quoted on this, but I'm pretty sure the ML checks, MLL checks come in at £1.65 in Accountancy Manager. They might be slightly higher, so I, I would like them if they're on it just to maybe confirm that on the chat. But they're near, you know, one of, one of the things is that if anybody knows, uh, AML uh, checks are actually can be quite expensive. So practice the practice management really does come down quite, you know, they do all the digital checks and they're quite cheap. The WhatsApp thing, we, uh, we Accountancy Manager has a two-way um, text message system, which is actually great because a lot of the practice managers only do one way, so they you can send texts out to the clients, but they don't come back the other way. So uh -huh. in Accountancy Manager, the texts come back. So, for example, at Christmas, I sent out... It was really good because I sent out every I sent out every client to be uh, text at Christmas Eve, and pretty much every client saw it as that I had sent them a personal text, and my accountancy manager was just bouncing back, going, "You know, Mary was wishing you happy Christmas," and um, the text thing was really. Um, Heather was mentioning texts are really part of the future. Um, more and more clients answer far more quicker off text and WhatsApp than uh, they do of any other um, any other uh, software. Now, what we do is we use a uh, doctor phone and we use iExplorer, or there's also um, Maze that you can use. And if you're worried about your PDF, if you're worried about your time frame and WhatsApp, you can actually uh, you can actually download those onto your phone and you can PDF them. Now, in Accountancy Manager, 
every time a client emails you or sends you a text or does anything, there's a timeline, which is which is fantastic. So especially my line of business, the timeline is really good because clients forget that they corresponded with you. But you also need to have proof of your WhatsApp conversations as well. So we use we use macro plans. We have, whether you have an iPhone or a, a an Android. Um, I don't know whether it's helpful, but I did a. Um, it's going to be launched in September. I'm, I'm do, I've done an ebook with my firm's app that's going out to America and Australia, and we covered we've covered everything about how to record um, text and WhatsApp in, into your practice. You know, and it's got all the suppliers. So I'm happy to share that with anybody in the future if they want to. Um, Let's share it. Yeah, absolutely. So launched, my firm's app will be launching it in the. Um, uh, mid to late se September so we're yeah, yeah that would be very interesting document. so um is Heather uh, back yet? She's not she's not back we, we have completely lost Heather but hopefully she will rejoin at some point and um, a couple of questions actually about the AML checks okay. um Jason Dalton from Safe Hands um, is asking about how well how useful is it really does it just verify that that the documents aren't stolen? Does it verify that the client is connected to the ID, for example? Um, and if you still need to check the identity and confirm the address, it does do you need to spend the extra money? Uh, and, and helpfully, Marcus has said that um, with Accountancy Manager, the ch those checks do start at 2.99 plus VAT, but they no, do they're increase, not, they're not, they're not they do decrease with um, scales. So if, you, if you're doing lots of them, um, you right, can- Can I just correct? Um, I'm pretty sure they're not two ninety nine. He says the more you buy, the cheaper it is. Yeah, but okay, if, if if anybody from accountancy manager is listening, I'm pretty sure they're not two ninety nine because I bought my last lot. I bought my last lot quite a while ago, but they weren't they weren't two ninety nine, and I didn't buy a, a huge batch either. But the key is, what do they do, and is it worth the money? Do you know what they're actually checking, Sarah? Yeah, they're they're checking absolutely. They're checking absolutely everything. They're checking the passport ID. They're they, they do absolutely everything. So yes, they are worth the money. And and you all, you can also do a company check, um, credit check on the company as well before you send, you know, if you want to actually deal with them to send the proposal. Now there's nothing to stop you doing the old fashioned way of doing your ML checks. And if you don't want to spend that money, what I would say is that if you're looking at a practice management system, you're looking at something that's all in one and you're looking at saving your time and having all your checks and your digital stuff in in one system. So that's where the practice management system is beneficial and and, and paying for those checks. Because otherwise, you know, I, I could suggest to you that you do them all on another piece of software, but then you've got them all over the place again. So the whole idea of a practice management system is that it's filtered into one. A bit like your iPhone, that you pick up your iPhone and it's all there. And you you're not switching around on loads of different um I, the viewpoint about are they worth paying for? You can do all the stuff manually, but you can spend a long time doing it as well if you want. But I'm not interested in spending hours. Um, I'm not interested in if you know. If I was worried, I'm 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 able to have a Zoom call with to verify. Do you know what I mean? To mean to if there's any further verifications I want to do, I I can do that. So. We have actually got a candidacy manager on the chat. Um, okay. Thank you, Jason Dalton, for pointing that out. Apparently, they do go as low as one pound twenty-five um, for AML checks. And um, someone's mentioning that there is a sort of KYC due diligence section. I just always wonder about how do you actually verify that you're the person who is your client, whether that is that they are the person that they say they are. Well, in the coronavirus, I did one yesterday. I took on a very interesting charity called um, Men Matters Scotland because there's been quite a high suicide rate in Scotland for young men during the coronavirus. And I'm quite interested in that charity. So I um, AML the board yesterday. So I basically said I wanted to do the whole board. So they sent me the scan of all the items uh, of, of everything that I needed, all the bills, and um, I needed to do a fast. And, Obviously, I then did a Zoom call, so each board member rang into the Zoom, and I obviously had the copy of their passport, and I'd already verified them on um, Accountancy Manager. But for my own peace of mind, because usually I've always said this, I'm a face-to-face -face person, I like to see them in face, but they were able to come on to a Zoom call one by one, 
and I was able to identify them by to see that they were the same person that was on the documents. Personally, I think you should as well because, um, you know, I've always preferred seeing the person as well. But if you can't see somebody, use you know have the documents scanned and have the documents there, and then go ask them to dial into Zoom so that you can actually see that as them. It's a very good way to do it. Google mm. Meet, Zoom, Skype, whichever whichever suits you. Yeah, there is, I, a, there, is a, there is a document on the ICB website about um, using electronic ID checks, by the way. If I can get the link, I'll share it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, that would be very useful. I mean, I did, I did eight of them yesterday on one Zoom call, so they all came in one by one. And I, and I had one person where I was just there going, I'm not sure that is you. And we were there going, you need to take your glasses off. You need to nod your head. You need to. Uh, but eventually I was happy that it was him. Because um, sometimes passport pictures look a little bit, bit different, as you know. So, um, you know, you're, you're able to say to them, turn sideways or, it, do you know what I mean? So, and I actually did make a silly mistake because I originally met the guy with the mask and I had in my head, well, I've seen him when I met him. And then I thought, no, I didn't really see him because actually he had a mask on in my office. So I saw half of him. So I said, I need to verify you again. And he said, well, we met. And I went, no, but I still didn't see the bottom half of your face. So you do need to be, you do need to be careful and aware. Um, and it'd be interesting that you mentioned that it'd be very handy to have a look at that uh, electric ID that you were just mentioning, the, the protocol about that. Mm. It's, a big, mm. it's a big area, isn't it? Because presumably, so hooray, we've got Heather back. Nice Woo! to see you back, Heather. No doubt, we'll you'll be as quiet as a mouse potentially. Um, are you there, Heather? So maybe the internet's even worse. I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much, both of you, for meeting us without any. AV kit being dispatched to you. So I do appreciate it. And sorry, everybody who's um, listening in and having any kind of audio problems. So now I can just see Heather's name. I can't even see her face. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, do you know what? I We've got this brand new guy called Sujay Patel. He's just joined the ICB team. Um, he's super fantastic. And we're going to be talking about him in the newsletter, actually, which is coming out at the end of this week. Um, but he is going to be onboarding all of our new practices and making sure that um, each of you are feeling confident about all of your AML checks um, or your whole AML process and also everything else that comes with running a practice. Um, you know, there's more and more things every day. I'm sure you will. Um, feel that are challenging you in your business but um, we are here to help so i am going to um yeah find a link to the documentation about e um id checks um i think personally i think you know it's great to use these tools but i think there's the sort of they're the additional tool no, and what you really need to do is verify that your your client is who they say they are and I don't think any kind of online check is going to do that for you. They're just going to check that the person they say they are is. Um, is, well, is yeah, just person. following up one of the questions there, somebody mentioned that they had stopped using, you know, the AM at checks on the accountancy manager. What I would say in the same for Santana, you know, they, these, you know, they, these companies are young. And I, and I know for a fact, like James and the, the accountancy manager team are working hard on the you know, the AML checks and security. And, and I know for a fact, if, if you get, you will see on their emails that they update, um, that they are working hard on that. And that is one of the, the sort of future things. And they've listed that as a, you know, so these are packages are only going to get better and better. And what I would say to you, if you do sign up to one of these packages, they're, they're, they allow you to take on far more customers. Um, because they just free up your time usually to, um, to to do that work. So, you know, there will be, what you've got to remember is they're still quite young. And if, if we remember Sage and Zero, you know, at the beginning, they didn't have everything right. You know, we were all there going, no, they don't have this, they don't have that. But, you know, they, you know, they, they are all growing at the time and they will be improving, but both softwares will be doing that at the same, you know, at the same time. So, I, I agree with you that it's an additional tool. So I don't, I wouldn't write it off because you just, you just don't like one bit of it. Mm. 
Well, what we'll do, we'll follow this up with a link to the um, the documentation on the ICB website, and I will put CJ into into work, making sure that we make that nice and clear. Um, and uh, because Jason, yeah, Jason Dalton is like, you know, do you really do you really need to do it in addition, and do you need to spend the money? I was of the understanding that it was included in the price of these tools, and um, but that does bring us on sort of nicely to the price of them. They are roughly the same price, am I right? Accountancy manager no, is around. No. Well, special. Well, there's, it is. So oh, you got a special deal. Oh, I oh. have some news for the. Um, so you know, well, you know me. I can talk anybody to. So <laughs> the the one thing I love about accountancy manager is, uh, and I love I love James because even though they've grown, like they've got so much bigger since I first put, I've always felt that um, you know, that they're they're approachable and that you can make suggestions to them and that they're part of the that you know that they like suggestions. So. At the moment, one of the things that probably alarms bookkeepers a little bit is that the, at the moment, um, the accountancy manager's fees are the normal price of £39 plus VAT. So, that, so, so but it does it take, into, it take into account that it does slightly more than Centena as in it does the, all the onboarding. It also does the invoicing and the time, the two-way text. So there is a little bit more in there. Now, uh, accountancy manager have agreed to give ICB members 35% off that. So that would come in at £25 plus VAT. Is that and for life? I would have to, usually, usually they, usually it is. So um, uh, when they're given, when they're given deals before, they um, they didn't say to me there was a time on that. So um as again, the guy in accountancy manager is on the um, is on. I think so. Do tell us. That. But when you there's a free trial for accountancy manager, and basically if you quote A M I C B, and your thirty day trial, you will be given the you will be given the twenty five pounds plus VAT price. So. They also have they also have a lovely video, Amy. That uh, one of the things I liked about Accountancy Manager is they have a they have a lovely video, and and, and it's come up in various forms that I've seen. Oh, Accountancy Manager and all the pack they're very much made for accountants. You know, they, they don't really account for bookkeepers. Well, Accountancy Manager has really worked on that, and they've actually set up a special. Um, so you can actually, instead of saying that you're an accountancy practice, you can set, set up that you're an actual bookkeeping practice and it changes the settings and what goes out to your clients and the automated emails. Now, I have a lovely video that I've put up in the chat that, um, that people can have a look at, you know, for, for called accountancy manager for bookkeepers, because it is one of the things that I've read that's been a complaint about all practice, man, you know, that they, they're catering for accountants and and what I would say about that is surely your whole bookkeeping business also resolve, revolves around company time states. So if you're doing the bookkeeping, you're passing it on to an accountant. So you need to put the dates that the, the accounts are due. You then need to work your internal dates and workflow for your staff. So you're not giving it to the accountant a month before it's due. Your accountant is then stressed up to the eyeball. Your client's stressed up to the eyeballs because you haven't given the work to the accountant. You should really try and have it done within three months of the, the you know, the earliest. Have it off to the accountant so that all the time, the minute then you complete that work, it's a self, um, it's a self-centered task, self-generating task. So the minute I put that those accounts have gone to the accountant, say for example, for year end 2020. I then tell it that, and then all the dates change for next year, for 2021. So in my deadline task list, it then shows me next year when everything is when everything is due. So, so you do need to have those original accounting dates in there, but the bookkeeping, uh, the accountancy manager for bookkeeping is a really nice touch, and I, I and I really like it. So if you're all right, I would quite like to put up the, the video link so that people can see it, if you're all right with that. Or, are you all right with doing that, Amy? Yeah, did you say you've already shared the video? No, I haven't shared it yet. Okay, I'm I'm just, do you, yeah, feel free to um, send it to us, check, as I we all know. Check, I just wanted to check with you first before I did. There's the difference between bookkeepers and accountants. Some people are a little bit of both. 
Yes, they are. And that's where accountancy manager is really good because it, it caters for both. We're, we're very much both. So I'm just going to put it in the, well, I'm just going to put it in the chat. Heather, I don't suppose you want to try speaking, do you? You are there, but I can't see your face. Speak to us, Heather. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. It was probably the wrong call to kick her out of the meeting. I haven't done it on purpose, Centre, I promise. I think in fairness to Centre, we've got to be, a, I think we've got to give two sides a bit of a chance because it's not really... Well, the thing I hear about Centre is that it's very customizable, And I kind of initially thought there's kind of too much with Centre, that it's maybe a little bit overwhelming and who's got time to customize their own software because we're not all software engineers. Um, so that was kind of what I was hoping Heather would be able to speak to us about and how, um, you but know. That could be a good point, Amy, because some people really, really like to you know, I've got a colleague in Glasgow that uh, really, really likes to uh, develop her own customised task list. And then I'm the opposite. I want I want the work done for me. It's like I like iPhone because I just find Android to I need to customise Android. You know, it depends on your personality. So they're both, you know, they, they both have their good points when it comes to that. So I think as an individual, you need to decide what your character is like and which one would work for which one would work for you um so you know um heather i do i do know that some people find content um, a bit a bit easier to customize different things to suit their but accountancy manager does have custom fields that allows you to the reason i liked it was because i felt that james you know a bit of a background to james was originally a practicing accountant um so he did set up the whole thing that covers accountancy and bookkeeping. So I felt I didn't have to do all that work. I didn't have to think in my head all the ideas and the things that I was missing. So I, I found that quite easy. But then on other software, I also like to, you know, be able to you know, do my own thing a little bit more. So um, it's quite, have you got any more feedback about uh, Centre or Amy? Oh, well, just that, you know, they're quite a similar, a similar sort of set up company. They've still got their founders working in the company. And, and I think that's always, um, you know, it's true of ICB. So I think it's always a good, a good sign. And it means that, you know, it's been set up for the, for the right reasons. And it's still being, being run by people who care about the customer, not just the, the bottom line. My advice is if you're starting practice, consider either of them, um, you know, I wish I wish accountancy manager, for example, had come out years and years ago because I got myself in a bit of a befuddle with all my administration. In fact, I'm pretty convinced I lost an awful lot of income because I just wasn't handling it. And I remember at the summit saying to uh, Gary, you know, I'm not taking on more clients because I just can't handle the admin. I was really quite stressed by it. I felt like I was doing more administration than actually helping clients and the book. You know, you might bulk a little bit at you know, the prices, but it really, you know, I, I would say I'm saving about, I would say I'm saving about 12 to 20 hours a week, a month on, on administration time. So that is, you know, the, 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 the monthly fee easily pays for it, easily pays for itself, no matter which software it is. I, yeah, I think that's huge. So you, so you basically, you put all of your tasks in there across your team, and then you use that to build out your invoicing. And then you do all of your invoicing through accountancy manager as well. Well, I have because I like it um, because it's, because the way I've set it up, I have. And then I just I just export it into my Sage software from my for my normal accounts. But yeah, I really like um, I really like the, the dashboard, um, the accountancy manager dashboard. The other thing I really like about accountancy manager is that I feel you see any when I met them first, when we discussed GDPR, they really took my views quite seriously and they did an awful lot about their security, you know, for, for data, you know, which was really, really important. And they'll probably remember I was a right pain in the neck about it because I, I hounded them about the GDPR and I was really impressed the work, you know, that, that they did with it. I've also now, um, you know, they're now hopefully but when, if, under ICB's approval, obviously, looking to be accredited by ICB. And I've got a lot. I've got a lot of um, admiration for any software that wants to go through that rigmarole of being, you know, accredited and 
and having all the checks against them because I just feel that I know myself when I go into ICB website I am more keen to use the companies that are accredited that have actually gone to the, the trouble um, so yeah as you should so you know our ICB's accreditation process we put the um you know the deciding factor is the bookkeeper so we we find a bookkeeper um an ICB bookkeeper of course um to review the software and then if they think it should be accredited it gets accredited um and then the software gets to use our logo on their website so do look out for that seal of approval it is um community driven um and and just, very just recently we've we've actually we did did a whole review our reviewer did a i think it was like a 12 page review incredibly thorough typical um bookkeeper and she said you know i wouldn't recommend it and so we we withheld the accreditation so um you know we don't it's not easy to get accredited by ICB, so um, you can trust it. An accountancy manager has won our um, favourite practice management software award for the last two years, so it is doing very well. Um, I'm just thinking that I could potentially ask, um, so Pamela Dillon has been on the chat, and um, I'm thinking that what I could do is actually just going to see we tried this once before and it didn't work but we might as well try it again and um, i'm going to ask see if she would like to be a panelist and maybe she can talk a little bit about center because yeah that um, was seems like pamela has been was using a different software uh, Amy, there, there is there is a question there about obviously the pricing that i gave um and some of the members there are asking if they had already signed up can they benefit from that price well i would say i would suspect Probably, but I wouldn't like to definitely say, but somebody on the accountancy manager could maybe verify that because I couldn't speak for them on that side. But it I is think that's a great idea. So I think, we've, is it, I don't know if Marcus is from accountancy manager, but he seems to be talking on their behalf. Um, Pamela Dillon, hello, welcome. Hi Pamela. Can you hear me? We yeah. can hear, are you Scottish as well? She is. Yeah. Hi, hi Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. <laughs> this is so great. Not one, but three, or maybe two and a half, um, because Heather's somewhat with us, um, have joined us on ICB TV. Thank you very much for joining us um, on the spur of the moment. So you've just moved from, is it Onco? Is that how you pronounce it? Over to Centre? Onco. Onco. I've been with Onco for a couple of years. They were very new started. Uh, they were formed like Sarah had been saying with a practicing accountant and her husband is a software engineer. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I I really, really liked that and I did recommend it to lots of folk uh, because it was so, so simple to set up and they had, uh, you could have as many users as you liked, which suited me because I had three part-time workers and you just paid a pound per month per client. Uh -huh. but, and it did all the emails and stored documents, but they were going to do a thing with anti-money laundering and regular update with company's house, you know, changing accountancy date. Mm -hmm. But it, they were going to do it for a few months and months and it never took place. And that was the only reason I'd moved to center because we were starting to get a few more clients and we're wanting to do more AML checks, but if you if you have if you have just a few clients and like myself a, a couple of part time workers, then the onco is definitely a lot a heck of a lot easier to set up than a pound centre and accountancy mm. manager. I see. And so, did you look at accountancy manager and centre when you made that decision? Yes, I'd looked at accountancy manager before I went with onco. And then when I was leaving Onco, grudgingly leaving Onco, I looked at Accountancy Manager and Centre. And Centre was a lot more work to set up with the customising, but I found it a lot easier to do than Accountancy Manager because Centre has a lot of uh, like step-by-step -step instructions and they're frequently asked questions whereas accountancy manager i could never get hold of anybody to ask when i would get stuck with stuff mm. and i couldn't find anywhere to read up about it it's just like one very short 
one video about all the setup, and that was more why I went to the centre. Plus, as I was saying in my my chat thing, when we're doing bookkeeping, we've got the regular clients that we do stuff every month, constantly every month, mm -hmm. and I found that centre I could actually go in and say, right, Joe blogs. We only do his bookkeeping quarterly and we only do this, this and this and could put those tasks in only mm. and remove all the tax tasks that we didn't do. And that, that was quite simple to set up. Right. I would have thought that's kind of essential to be able to customise it in that way. Is that the kind of thing you can do with accountancy manager, Sarah, or is it not so easy? Well, I no customise accountancy manager. It's very easy to do it. What I would say is that some people have uh, struggled a little bit. They haven't picked up that you set up the custom fields. So when you're in Accountancy Manager, you have a list of all your services. And it's at that point in the settings that you set up. So say, for example, we've got age debtors chasing day. We've got sales invoice day. And it, so just like Companies House um, thing, they appear under the, the information as well. So. Yeah, so uh, some, I think it's um, a lot of people haven't realised are not properly using the custom fields in the accountancy manager like they should. So it, um, there's been a little bit of a misleading thing there that accountancy manager doesn't have the customization. That's not correct. I think it, I think it was more I just couldn't find it, and I'm not. I'm actually quite. I, I will I will give that to you. I will give that to you, um, Pamela. You know because you're obviously not the only person that has mentioned that that you you know you couldn't find it easily and um you know i'm, I'm i have mentioned three things like that to james and, and, and they will take that into consideration because they have moved things around you know for example you'll probably remember pamela they used to have the need help on the right hand side and nobody could see it with the video i mean they've got amazing videos but nobody knew they were there and just a simple thing by moving it up to the middle of the screen to the top everybody could now see the video instructions one by one, which made the whole process easier. So they are all learning. Well, it's too, it's too late for Pamela Dillon. She's already a center <laughs> customer. But, no, it, it absolutely is. But they, you know, they have, they, they are all learning from little things like this, because in terms of software, they're all pretty new, you know, in, ter in relative terms, you know, they've not been around for years. So I mean, I had a colleague who said I didn't, I couldn't see all the health videos, and you know that was one of the feedback I gave to accountancy manager that you couldn't see it. And mm -hmm. sometimes with these softwares, because they're web based, the cookies actually stop the health videos coming up, and they can do that in zero as as well. So I think they all have to deal with how the cookies sometimes prevent things being seen to the to the customer. It's, it's, it is a valid issue that Pamela has mentioned. Yeah, I, and I'm I'm really quite. I'm not a software designer, but I'm I, I'm really quite computer literate and used to setting up a lot of software and programs and designing reports and things. So I thought if I'm struggling to set this up, somebody that's not really tech savvy at all would really be struggling. <laughs> Yeah, I think that goes for all bookkeepers, right? You have to be pretty tech savvy nowadays because you're using all these different I tools. I think you also need to allocate the time. When I took on accountancy manager, I did find that I, I, I hadn't allocated enough time at the beginning. And then I sort of push it down and then I realized, no, I, I think with all practice management systems, you've got to allocate the time. You've got to give yourself a couple of weeks to get used to what they do, to put in the data. Oh, yeah. Then I'm learning. If you go into it half-heartedly, you just end up pushing it down. And I, I know plenty of bookkeepers have done that with all of them, but you do eventually, you've got to go back to it and you've got to put in that learning curve. But oh, yeah. afterwards... Tough really love, tough. Sarah. Tough love. No, it's, it's tough. no, it's true. I mean, anytime I move to a new, a new software, whether it's practice management or accountancy, it's it is. It's a lot of a lot of evenings and weekends spent setting them up. Do you know that the one th that it's probably it, I don't know if I'm the only one that has this great, but any of these practice management softwares, I would love to have them have a wee app like Zero on your phone or that goes into Outlook because see remembering 
when you're working away, like I still have a lot of folk in the age 50, and when you're working away in that, say remembering to go online and have centre or onco or account manager open to click the wee button to say you've done this, you've done that in reminders. It's like trying to remember that. I would just like to have them where we app or something that pops up on your screen. Yeah, I think <laughs> I was speaking to accountancy managers today about that, you know, and my firm's app. And I think the future for all these web software companies is that they will all have to develop an app going forward because the phone is definitely the future. Pamela's absolutely right. You're out seeing a client. You want to put the time in. So at the moment on the iPhone, I'm putting the time in and accountancy managers, website, mobile is quite good. But, you know, eventually I would prefer that it was an app that I was just clicking my time in Toggle. Hmm? toggle, see toggle for time track, and that's what I use for it. I know, but I know, Pamela. My view was I want everything in one <laughs> software, I don't want it in loads of different areas because yeah. then I'm back to the point now that I've got five different softwares and I've got more administration now. So, the, the whole point of a system, no matter which one you choose, needs to cut, needs to streamline that, needs to streamline that down so that you're not having too many different systems going at one. One of the things I see on here, Marcus has confirmed the price, which I did say he has confirmed it on the chat. He has, yeah. So the accountancy manager price is reduced to 25 pounds plus VAT for ICB members, that's per user per month ongoing. Yep. Which implies forever. And um, the code to use is AMICB could be Amy CB potentially, and um, because I spell my name with an I. Yeah, no, they told me that. They told me that this morning, Amy. That that was fantastic. So if you use that code AMICB, you can get a discount from Accountancy Manager. There's been a lot of chat. If nothing else, um, we have, Libby has discovered um, with the help of Brian Trainor that there is a telephone number to call Accountancy Manager with. And um, some people are saying it's actually one of the the most user friendly pieces of software. And um, but it does, you know, like Sarah's been alluding to, it does take time to set these things well, up. And I personally find with it with project management software, you do have to get into the habit of using it because like you say, Pamela, if you don't tick that box to say you've done it, um, the system is of no use to you. So you kind of almost have to project manage yourself into using the tool itself. So, and um, Pamela, did you have anything else you wanted to say about Centre? How transformative do you think using a practice management software is for a practice? And do, should you be, do you need to be a practice of a certain size to see the benefits? No, I mean, there's, there's myself and two, two lasses that are in four or five days a week, part days and a, a couple, one that's in one day a week. So we, we just have the one user login uh, because it was, you know, do you want to pay X amount of users for just part time use? But what I found it good for is if I'm on holiday or I, as happens at the start of year, I end up unexpectedly in hospital. As long as we're keeping that updated, they can they know whose back return I've got done or not got done or who's waiting on something getting done. Mm. And also, if I actually finish getting it all put in, uh, they'll know, they can find who, because we do work for three or four different chartered accountants, it's not like one group of chartered accountants that all our clients are with, they know which accountant they have to contact about, so and so that's all there, and that's what finds uh, it's good is that everything is in the one place for them. Mm. So, um, so I think probably because it is coming up to three o'clock, um, we should probably wrap this up. I want to say a big thank you to Sarah on your birthday and Pamela for oh, coming in at the last minute. Um, also, a bit of an apology to Heather Palmer because I really did want to hear more from you and I am really sorry about that. Um, and sorry to anybody at home who was experiencing the bad audio there. Um, I do just want to say one quick thing about the Bookkeeper Summit. Um, Bookkeeper Summit this year is taking place during Global Bookkeeping Week, which is the 16th to the 19th, um, so 16th to 20th of November. Um, so what we're going to do, like every year past, we've been running this event for 10 years. So this will be the 11th year. We're not going to be in person, but we are going to be virtual. And um, we are going to have a private social network 
throughout the week of Global Bookkeeping Week, where we can meet each other on video, on chat, um, and just totally enjoy each other's company and learn from each other the same way we would if we were at an in-person bookkeepers summit. Um, but for two days, there will be some great content. So we're gonna have um, proven strategies, industry trends, and um, we're going to be hearing real life success stories from other practices. And um, as sort of Sarah has said, there's many different ways that you can run your bookkeeping business. So we're going to try and show you the breadth of the possibility within the bookkeeping world. And also, you know, have a look to the future, help you plan the future, help you plan your next move, whether that's employing people, building the team, shrinking it down, changing your, um, changing your systems, maybe just spending more time with your family, or maybe even um, dedicating more time to your other business that you might have. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna be covering everything, but the focus is very much on you and on helping you connect with the community. So there will be, you can buy a ticket eventually, Next week you can buy a ticket, but not just yet. Um, Amy, but, yeah. Could I just cover one thing that I forgot to say about Kankin City Manager that a lot of bookkeepers have a problem with is a letter of engagement and proposals. Mm -hmm. And you see if you customise your services in a Kankin City Manager, it does develop the um, a letter of engagement for you that covers quite high standards. And that is actually extremely good because I used to struggle with that quite a lot. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, there is a letter of engagement template on the website, by the way, that you can download. Um, but yeah, that's something that should be kept up to date and you should send that to all of your, um, all of your clients. There's also a disengagement template on the website, should you need to disengage any of your clients. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much. It's been, it's been a lovely Wednesday afternoon. I'm gonna go pick up my kids from school and not get any more work done for the rest of the day. Um, I hope you're feeling happy in your practice or your business um, wherever you are in the world. And um, do come and see us again at our next ICB TV. So take care, happy afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you.